Hello and welcome to Spoken Like a Native podcast. My name is Diane. I'm an English teacher from Scotland and a devoted language learner. And this podcast is for those learning English to improve their listening and vocabulary with episodes on engaging topics like culture, current events, history, and how languages work. If you want to improve your speaking and listening, head over to speakmeters.com where you can take part in small group conversations hosted by native speakers. This is an amazing way to boost your fluency, expand your vocabulary, and increase your confidence by practicing with qualified, certified, and selected native speakers who really enjoy helping people. There are sessions at a range of levels for English, French, Spanish, and German, so book your first session today, speakmeters.com. And don't forget, you can take part in this podcast by telling me your ideas for topics. Information about how to get in touch with us is in the description. Enough beating around the bush, let's get this episode underway. Hi and welcome to episode number eight. This will be part one of an interview with Nelly. She is one of the hosts at Speak Meters, like me, where I do sessions in English, she does sessions in French. But as you can see, As you can hear from this interview, she speaks English very well. So, let's get on to hearing about what Nelly has to say. And I do apologize for, there is a bit of a funny noise on this recording. Unfortunately, I don't yet have the method to eliminate it. So, this is just something I'm doing off my own back at the moment. So, hopefully in the future, I'll be able to get rid of these kind of technical issues. Also, I didn't want to ask Nelly to re-record our whole conversation because it wouldn't sound as natural. Anyway, that being said, let's get on to the interview. On the show today, we have a, a, a host from Speak Meters, and she is called Nelly. Hi, Nelly. Hi, Jen. How are you doing today? I'm very good. What about you? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. How is the weather in France? It's uh, pretty good today. We had the sun, uh, which is uh, very amazing because uh, it was uh, not uh, sunny the last uh, day. So uh, I'm very uh, happy to see the sun today. Great. And um, you're, you're not actually from France, are you? No, I'm not from France. I'm living uh, in France uh, since uh, 2015. Just to jump in to correct something, this is a mistake that many, many people make, even when they get to high level like Nelly. You would say, I have been living in France since 2015, or I have been living here for whatever, eight years. And uh, I'm from Ivory Coast. Okay. So... Um, Could you tell us what it what it's like to what what was it like to move to France and what's what's your experience been like? Yes, of course. So uh, I moved there after my uh, degree uh, from uh, high school, and uh, I had the opportunity uh, to to study in France. So uh, I had to leave my family um, and uh, come here uh, in France. I've traveled with my mother at the at the time, uh, which came here in order to to help me um, to do uh, the inscription uh, in the school and things like this to to help me uh, to to move in France. But after that, uh, she she had to go back uh, in Ivory Coast. She had to go back to Ivory Coast. So uh, at the beginning, uh, I, I was uh, with uh, a friend of my mother and uh, I had to go to school uh, from there. So it was like, uh, I think, uh, 13 minutes uh, in bus. And um, I had to live there for several months, I think like uh, four, four months. And after that, I moved in my own place. And uh, it was the beginning of something new because it was the first time at uh, 17 years old that I have to live uh, by myself. <laughs> mm. Wow. And so so you what did you study at university? 
Um, I have uh, five years uh, of uh, engineering cycle, mm-hmm. so uh, I've done um, two, three years of uh, general uh, engineer. So I have a math class, a technology class, a physics class, um, and after that, uh, I've specialized myself uh, in uh, mechanic modelization. Okay, and are you working in engineering now? Yes, I'm working, but uh, as a, a project manager. Okay. What does that mean exactly? It means that I... So I'm in the company that help other companies to, to make the project happen. So like, uh, for example, in the, the company that is my client, they wanted to use a customer relationship management in order to help develop the relationship with their customer. So my job is to make easy for them to deploy the, the software that they have to use and to help the employee of the company to use the software in the best way in order to reach their goals. Okay, okay. And how long have you been at your current position? Uh, it's been one year. Okay. Do you like it? Yes, uh, it's... Uh, I really like it uh, because uh, it really meets what I wanted to do, which was uh, uh, lead the project. I really like uh, to be a project uh, manager. And uh, I like uh, the, my current uh, company. Um, it's, you, you have plenty of things uh, to do in there, uh, professionally and uh, in the company, like such as... Um, um, such as... Uh, how, how do you say it? Mm-hmm. Um, how do you say it for formation? Training. Training, thank you. So you have plenty of things to do in the company, such as uh, trainings. You can invest yourself uh, in uh, projects that uh, you like. And uh, so it's uh, great to have a professional development and a personal development too in the company. So I really like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I I noticed that from working with a lot of French students that there is a, a lot of focus on, on training in French companies. There's yes. A lot, like you, every year you have to do quite a lot of training. <laughs> exactly, it's uh, important for them that uh, the employee have to develop uh, their competencies, their skills, uh, and not to do the same thing uh, uh, for too long. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a positive thing. Um, so, uh, by the way, do you do you mind if I if I correct you at all? Oh no, not at oh, all. Okay. Because uh, I have a, uh, I, I know that my English is not perfect. So uh, no, it's <laughs> be my guest. <laughs> okay, um, and I think in in that case as well, it, it's good as a as an example for people listening if they w- want to join in speak meters. You know, they they get they get corrections but yeah you yeah, sure. you, you speak very uh, clearly and it, it's uh, it's easy to understand what what you're communicating so um so would you let me think about the best way to put the question so was it what was it like as an experience uh moving from from africa to to france and trying to uh settle into france was it was it easy or what, what were the easy parts and the difficult parts um, the easy part is that uh, we share the same language mm-hmm. because uh, in the Ivory Coast uh, we speak French too, mm-hmm. so it's um, it's easy to communicate uh, with people uh, here. I don't have the I don't I didn't have to learn the language mm-hmm. before doing uh, any classes uh, in my st- my uh, my field. Mm-hmm. But um, the first thing that was uh, difficult was to live uh, away from my family yeah. because uh, 
uh, all my life I've been with my family, so my, my mother, my father, and my little sister. And it was my first time being alone from, the, from them uh, more than one month. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, very complicated. And I have to do the food myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to cook myself. Yeah. So uh, it was uh, challenging. <laughs> Um, and uh, the, another thing that was uh, very difficult uh, was the weather, mm. because in Nivari Coast uh, we just have two um, two seasons. Say? Yes, two seasons. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, the raining season and uh, the the dry mm. season. Yeah. And uh, during the rainy season, the temperatures. Uh, the the minimum temperature is like uh, 20 mm -hmm. in the south uh, of uh, Ivory Coast. I was in the south, 20, 20 22 degrees. Mm -hmm. So I haven't been uh, in a country with the winter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, are, so are, you in, are you in Paris? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it was uh, very challenging uh, to to have to face uh, the weather because I really don't like when it's cold. Mm -hmm. I prefer uh, sunny days and uh, and hot days. So yes, uh, it was very challenging. Mm -hmm. And and now, are you more used to the weather? Not at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, I'm still a uh, uh, very uh, how do I say frizzy. Do you say frizzy person or frozen person? Um, you, we don't. I don't think we have a specific word, but you, you could say I. I feel the cold. I feel the cold. Mm. Okay, so yes, I really feel the cold. Mm. Yeah, and are you more comfortable if it's if it's hotter? Yes, yeah. I really like it. I prefer <laughs> when it's hotter. I'm the opposite. So that's why. Yes. Yeah, so that's why I'm very happy to see today the very the sun mm. and uh, it's uh, 15 degrees. <laughs> Yes, oh, it's not. It's not exactly hot, though. <laughs> yes, I'm, but it's uh, it's better than the last days. Yeah, I I'm kind of the opposite. I I'm more comfortable if it's a little bit cold than if it's too hot. It's always nice. Some somewhere in the middle, like twenty degrees, is is I think everybody's okay with. Mm -hmm. But um, if it's um, I prefer it to be slightly cold than to be too hot, like thirty five, forty degrees. It's um, really hard. For, for me, because I'm from Scotland, and oh, yeah, we're I understand yeah, it. <laughs> we're, we're used to you know dealing with the colder temperatures, mm. a lot of wind. Um, but the other thing as well is is wearing sun cream all day, uh, every day when it's hot, when it's um, when it's sunny, which you don't have to do so much in the UK. Yes, I can understand it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was there. Can you tell me anything else about what what's it, what's it like to um, be an immigrant in France? Yes, uh, another challenging part uh, is uh, the administration. Um, mm -hmm. Because I, as uh, uh, an immigrant uh, student, uh, you have to uh, to have a card which is called uh, titre de séjour mm -hmm. in French. Mm -hmm. It's a record that uh, allows you to be in France uh, and to study in France. And uh, it's uh, at the time, it was really difficult to have it because uh, in the prefecture, mm. how do you say it? Sure. Uh, Let me check. Prefecture. I, I can do with, uh, with the administration. Okay. It's okay. So with the administration, um, at the time, you can't uh, make uh, some appointments. You can take some appointments uh, uh, online. You have to make the queue. Uh, In the past, you couldn't make an appointment online. You had to queue up or do a queue. In front of the administration uh, building, and uh, you have to hope uh, to be uh, taken in order to just uh, give uh, your application for the uh, for the titre de, de séjour. Mm. So it was very difficult. You have uh, to be uh, 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 you have to be there very soon mm. in the morning. Like uh, sometimes I have to be there at uh, two 
a.m. Mm-hmm. and the building will open at 9. Mm-hmm. So I will uh, stay uh, uh, in front of the building uh, in the cold uh, season mm-hmm. um, in order to, to make sure that I will be in the 51st person to enter mm-hmm. the building because they only take the 51st person and after that you mm-hmm. can't make it. Okay. They only take so 50, yeah. 50 people per day. Yes, exactly. Okay. So uh, it was uh, very challenging and I was uh, questioning myself that uh, why they don't uh, allow us to make appointments uh, on the online, why mm-hmm. is it like this? And uh, after uh, several years, so this was the two first years I have to do it, mm-hmm. but uh, the last year, so the two last years, it's, um, you can do it online now like you can apply online and when it's okay you just have to go to the administration to take your card so it's better now okay yeah it's a bit um it's a bit de dehumanizing to have to wait yes those those cues exactly yeah um i think i i had i was in the the british um embassy in in london i think it was for a visa to go to america to do like um a camp counselor thing we ha- we had to wait a really long time it's so boring those those things yes yes totally yeah and any anything else about what what's your what's your life like as a being a an african person in france the Another thing is the food, mm-hmm. because the food uh, is uh, is different, and uh, I was uh, really missing uh, the food that I used uh, to to eat uh, in uh, Ivory Coast. Mm-hmm. So uh, I have uh, to to adapt uh, to to eat, and the only thing as a student that uh, you eat uh, every day and that is uh, very affordable is uh, pasta. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nothing more, uh, nothing exciting, and uh, I have to. You you have a sensation that you have to prove yourself mm. uh, in the environment because uh, there are a lot of uh, stereotypes mm. um, around uh, the African continent uh, in general. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, I I have to prove myself to to prove to people that uh, I'm intelligent, to prove to people that we have schools in uh, our countries, yeah. that um, I, I'm in the right place uh, in an uh, engineering school because uh, I was uh, like, uh, the, in all the school, we were only uh, three black uh, people mm-hmm. and uh, we were two uh, immigrants. Mm-hmm. So it was um, challenging to, to, yes, to to allow people to know that uh, where you come from, um, you have uh, where where you come from, you you have things that exist here too. Yeah. So it's not like uh, you come in from the uh, the, the stereotypes, of things that they they show uh, in documentary, uh, things like this. Yeah, you, you don't come from the jungle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and. I, yeah, I think that's it. and also the field that you're in in engineering. Um, it's it's also been uh, it still is very male dominated too. Yes, exactly. It's a very male dominant, uh, and uh, you. Uh, I was a minority in uh, every kind of situation. <laughs> so as a woman, uh, as a, a black person, as an immigrant, mm. as an African. So yes, it was uh, a lot. To, to have on my shoulders, but uh, it was um, uh, I have to navigate uh, with all all this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Could, do you have any examples of of um, that feeling of like needing to like people's attitudes being um, a bit skeptical towards you? Can you think of any incidents of how people act or s- things they say or? Um, I had a friend uh, who um, who made a lot of uh, a lot of jokes. Mm-hmm. He made a lot of jokes, and um, most of uh, his jokes uh, were racist jokes. Really? I'm not going to to to, <laughs> to, to tell them. to yes uh, to repeat, but it it was uh, it was not it was not. Um, 
uh, how do you say méchant? Um, not cruel. They're not meant to be cruel. Yes, it was not cruel because uh, I was uh, I had a good relationship uh, with uh, with uh, this uh, this guy. Mm. But uh, he make a lot of jokes, and uh, he didn't know that I wasn't from France. Right. Okay. So one time I I don't know why maybe because I was uh, I was preparing uh, some uh, documents for the administration and he saw my uh, passport mm -hmm. so I have an ivory uh, ivory passport and he was like you not French mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like no and he was so sorry because for for him it was okay to do uh, those uh, jokes those racist jokes mm. but in front of black people from France right. because uh, he was used uh, to do it. But uh, when he, he knew that I wasn't from here, he got the sensation that uh, the joke uh, uh, were not funny and were, uh, were hurtful sometimes. Mm -hmm. So he really apologized about it. But, uh, but yeah, that is uh, an example uh, mm. of, uh, of a situation that I had. Yeah, it's kind of like um, yeah, jokes about women when before before men really realize the the effect that they have, they just say, that, "Yes, oh, yeah, just making fun." You know, you could be uh, exactly. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything, and it's like, oh, how about we make we make fun of you all the time? <laughs> um, exactly. So yeah, but uh, I I didn't. Um, I take it uh, because, uh, as I said, uh, I, I had a good relationship uh, with him. He wasn't cruel, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, they can make some jokes that uh, are are not uh, are not great when you're not in the environment and you someone new in this, mm -hmm. and you have to understand that uh, why they make this kind of uh, of joke. Mm -hmm. So. Um in, in general, is there a, do you feel like there's a lot of um, like humor which is based around uh, either racial or, or national stereotypes in France? Yes, uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's the same thing too in, uh, in Ivory Coast. I mm. think it's a very cultural thing that when you don't know the, the people about uh, when you don't know the people that you use to do mm. joke, mm. you don't um, understand that uh, those jokes are racist that you can't make them. Like for example, uh, in in Ivory Coast, the thing that we do when we we children, when we see uh, an Asian person, mm -hmm. we can um, uh, we we do the thing with the eye. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. I don't know how, if you see yeah, it. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yes. So, and uh, it was when I came in France and I uh, learned about it that I I knew that it was racist to do it uh, uh, for uh, to do it. Uh, it was racist for the Asian people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like um, in each country, I think there are stereotypes that lead to some jokes, mm. of, of, um, and you don't know that uh, it's a racist joke uh, unless someone told and exp someone tell you and explain you that uh, it's not uh, it's not well to do it. Mm. So, uh, mm -hmm. so yeah. You, you you have to to understand and to be ready to to learn yeah and w once you're in a, a more multicultural environment you become much more aware of exactly you know that people are different some people are some people are like the stereotype but some people are completely not at all and you know you can't judge people exactly immediately and um, what, what kind of idea did you have of, of France and French people before you came? Oh, it's a very great question. Uh, I had the opportunity to uh, to come in France uh, three times before uh, coming for living here. Mm -hmm. It was uh, only for holidays with my family. And uh, when I came here and with all the things that we see on televisions, 
for me, uh, France uh, is a very developed uh, country, mm -hmm. a rich country with classy people, people that uh, can, uh, people that talk uh, with, uh, with a classy way, mm -hmm. uh, people dress well, uh, everything is fine mm -hmm. here. And uh, for example, I was shocked to see that you can have um, a trash on the street. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was shocked to see that uh, some people can be poor here. They can't have, they can't have a, a home. They have to live uh, in the city. Um, uh, I, I was shocked to see all these uh, things because uh, on the television and from my only uh, vacation experience, I I always thought that uh, France was like the perfect country. <laughs> yeah, and you, I think the image in in films and series is often like um, everyone's very very good looking and they're very slim and exactly. they have very fashionable clothes and they're always drinking wine. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. So um, it was that uh, I was shocked to see that uh, you have uh, people with problems everywhere. Finally, uh, in uh, every country, it's not uh, in a specific area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, uh, when you actually moved to France, uh, did your perception? Um, what What's your perception now of uh, French people? Uh, the perception that I have is that it's not a perfect country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first thing. It's not a perfect country, and uh, just uh, it's just a, a country with people that just want to be heard and have their rights uh, be uh, respected, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, important. We can see uh, uh, now uh, with uh, all the manifestations mm. that uh, the populations uh, are doing mm, in order the, to be all heard. The protests. What, are the protests what are there, exactly? What are there? What are the protests about at, at the moment? Oh, um, it's a very <laughs> technical many, issue. Many things. <laughs> Um, I don't know how to say it uh, in English. Uh, right now, people are protesting because uh, they want uh, to, um, to 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 raise the age that can allow you to stop working. Mm, okay. Yeah, they want to um, raise the age of retirement. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So, so people, people want are protesting people don't want to work, about it. work longer than yes. Well, yeah. Okay. Exactly. So yeah, that's the main the main topic. That's the main topic yeah. uh, 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 here in France. So yeah, my my idea of the French uh, people is more uh, how can I say it moderate. Mm -hmm. Like uh, it's not uh, right or wrong is just like uh, you have a lot of thing that is good in France and a lot of thing that is not good and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it's more balanced my 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 opinion is more balanced mm -hmm. it, it was not like uh, oh everything is good and everything is perfect here yeah and so um you said that it's it was one one thing that that's easy about moving what was easy about moving there was that you didn't have to learn a, a new language. And I, I think if, if I compared myself, like if I was to move to the USA, I might be like, oh, I can speak English, but I know that the culture is very, very different. And yes. So I'm wondering, like, um, uh, in terms of the culture, like um, if you could compare Ivory Coast culture and French culture, what, what the, are the big differences? Yes, exactly. In the in the language, we have so many words that we use mm. uh, in uh, Ivory Coast that don't have the same meanings mm. in, uh, in in France. For example, uh, when we to when we take a, a photo, mm -hmm. uh, a picture, yeah. you can go to a, a place in order to develop the pictures and to have it uh, physically. Yeah. So in um, Ivory Coast, we say uh, when you you want to have the, the physical picture uh, be, before all the uh, before all the um, 
of the engines. Mm -hmm. Appareil, how do you say appareil? Um, um, how would you say, what's it? Appliances? Mm, you mean like the camera? Device. Devices, it's yeah. Device, yeah. yes. Uh, be, be before all the devices that can allow you to have a, a picture from your phone to a physical one mm -hmm. uh, at home, yeah. you have to go to a place to do it. Yes, yeah. So in um, Ivory Coast, uh, we say, um, je, je veux laver des photos. Mm -hmm. But when I translate it in, uh, so when I do the translation, it's like I want to wash mm -hmm. <laughs> a picture. <Yeah. laughs> so we say it uh, in Ivory Coast, but uh, in France, if you say I want to wash a picture, it's uh, people don't uh, understand yeah. what uh, you're saying. So you have to say I want to develop a picture. Mm -hmm. Je veux développer une photo. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's like um, you have some sentence, some word like this that you use uh, in uh, Ivory Coast are uh, completely uh, different uh, in, uh, in France. So, mm -hmm. it's uh, you at uh, the beginning, I have to think twice mm -hmm. <laughs> about what I want to say and, and ask myself if uh, we say it like this in France. Yeah. Okay, that's a, yeah, that's a good example. Um, yes, it's a very good example. Something just came to mind, I can't remember. Oh yeah, so you moved to, to Paris, and I think um, in Paris there's like, <clears throat> there's a reputation that the people are quite, uh, everyone is very busy, and they're, uh, they can be a bit rude, and you know, um, it's, uh, people are in, in a hurry all the time. Um, yes. And did you find, um, uh, that it was was it difficult to to make friends with people or, or were, were there things that were uh, um, in the way that people behave that you found uh, confusing or difficult at first? Um, just for a little uh, uh, for for a little uh, precision, mm -hmm. I was not in Paris, Paris okay. in the center of Paris, but uh, in the Ile de France, okay. Ile de France uh, area. Uh -huh. So it just uh, to make it easy uh -huh. for people to understand, we say Paris, but like uh, it's uh, just cities uh, around okay. Paris. So uh, yes, uh, people say that uh, Parisians or people in living mm -hmm. really in Paris uh, are are some like cold mm -hmm. or very busy. People run uh, every time. So it's true when I'm in the center of Paris that I see people going to work, they are, they are always running. Mm -hmm. And it's very different from Ivory Coast because in Ivory Coast, the people take their time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, people are not uh, running or rushing. So yeah, it was uh, something that uh, I've observed. But uh, it, where I was, uh, uh, it's called Sergi, so it's like at uh, 25 uh, minutes uh, in a uh, car from Paris. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a little city, uh, more friendly. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, okay to, it was easy for me to, to have friends uh, in my school. Okay. It was not uh, challenging or difficult. Yeah, I think also, also being a student, um, there's a natural way to, to meet, meet new people. You know, you're, you're young and you're studying together. It's, uh, yes. You'll have a kind of uh, ready-made social environment, so, so that's good. Exactly. Yeah. Um, what else? Were we, I was going to ask about the French in Ivory Coast, but I think you've said that you have different words. For, is it just the vocabulary which is different? The vocabulary is different, uh, the accent too mm -hmm. is uh, different because uh, in uh, last year, last year I have traveled uh, from France to Ivory Coast uh, with uh, my boyfriend who is French. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, for him, it was uh, very difficult uh, to understand what uh, the Ivory people said. I, I have to translate sometimes uh, to him and explain him uh, what uh, people meant. Because uh, when I'm here, uh, I've naturally uh, take the, uh, the French accent. Mm -hmm. So when I talk, people don't know directly that I'm from uh, uh, another country. Mm -hmm. They think that I'm from France mm -hmm. and uh, I, I am from France directly. I was born uh, in France, etc. Mm -hmm. But they don't think that I'm from um, 
Ivory Coast or an African country because I have a French, I have a French accent, mm -hmm. I think, the, the Parisian one at least. Mm -hmm. But when I speak with my Ivory uh, friends or when I'm in Ivory Coast, I switch uh, naturally mm -hmm. to the Ivory accent. Yeah. And if you ask me to do it, I can't do it and comment. <laughs> like, it's yeah, very yeah. natural. Yeah. So uh, when I'm with my boyfriend in France, he can uh, he can understand what I'm saying. But when it was uh, in Ivory School, in Ivory Coast, he he wasn't ready <laughs> ready for the work he has mm. to do in order to understand the people there. Yeah. So it's uh, the accent, the words, and the way to 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 say the words because mm. sometimes in some words that we that uh, have the R, mm -hmm. we don't pronounce it like we rush it. Mm -hmm. And uh, f for me, it's a slightly uh, different. So it's so it's so tiny that I don't uh, see the problem mm -hmm. if uh, in a word you say the R or not sound. But for other people, it's challenging. Yeah. Now that that's really interesting what what you're saying about switching naturally because um, yes. uh, I think also because you you moved to France quite young so you at, at a younger age um, yes you're, we're more, I was sixteen yeah so you're more able to adapt to your surroundings um, because our brains are still developing at, at that um, that time and um, um, yeah so so I'm I'm kind of similar in that I. Because I do so much teaching English, I have to speak very clearly. And, and also, I, I lived in England for a long time, so my accent is not really... You can't usually tell that I'm Scottish. But then if I speak to my family or if I speak to Scottish people, I naturally sound a little bit... Not extremely, um, but I start to sound more Scottish. It's, it's very... Mm. It's, but as you said, it's quite hard to do it naturally, like, um, without... If you just decide I'm going to speak in a Scottish accent, you have to listen to something for a while before yes. you <laughs> get back into <laughs> it, because it's it's something about the environment and it's um it happens with with lots of different people, um, and different accents as well. Like and and another thing is that uh, so I live in Spain and I speak Spanish and I understand Spanish and my partner is a native uh, Spanish speaker, so when mm -hmm. we are, when we are talking to each other. I think um, he he tries to be clear. He doesn't he doesn't speak very slowly, but he he makes sure that it's clear what he's saying. But if I listen yeah. to him speaking to local people or his friends from from school, sometimes I don't catch what they're saying because they they start to speak in slang or they speak extremely fast. But he yes. is not doing it. It's not a conscious decision. He just naturally starts to speak that way. And exactly. Yeah, and then when he speaks to his family who are from Argentina, he speaks in an Argentinian way. Mm. So there's just these, these without uh, making a conscious choice to switch, you just do. And I think in it's it's called code switching in the, the academic uh, term. And oh, code switching. Yeah, it's it's okay. really interesting. Like when, when we go into different environments with different people we adapt our, our language, like pronunciation and the, the type of words we use. So, um, yeah, it's really interesting. In French, we say, uh, être une éponge, uh, being a sponge. Being a sponge, yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, yeah, that's a good phrase for it. Um, is there anything else you'd like to say about about your experience of, um, of, uh, yeah, of being in France? Or... Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, I have a lot to say, but uh, <laughs> it doesn't come in, in English. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, another thing, uh, uh, another difference uh, is that uh, in France, uh, the public transports are well developed mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's uh, more accessible mm. uh, than uh, in Ivory Coast. Because here you have uh, the bus, the tramway, the metro, the airway. It's more accessible and easy uh, to go to a place uh, to another. Mm -hmm. In Avery Coast, in general, it's better to have a private vehicle. Mm. Uh, 
uh, if no, it can be uh, difficult uh, sometimes uh, to go to uh, a place uh, to another one. Another difference is that uh, in France you have a lot of uh, cultural places mm -hmm. that are accessible for for students, mm -hmm. uh, like a museum, uh, things like this. So mm -hmm. it's a mu museum, uh, libra library. Um, so it's great to go to those places to learn about uh, the, the country and to, to have a place uh, you can uh, read, uh, you can study. It's more developed than in uh, Ivory Coast, so I really like to go to museum uh, here and uh, to, mm -hmm. to visit uh, the city. So uh, it's great. And uh, you, yes, you have a lot of places that you, you can visit, like uh, the Tour Eiffel, Arc, uh, Arc de Triomphe, mm -hmm. things like this. And it's, uh, it's cool to, to go there, to visit, and to learn more about uh, the, um, the French culture. In Ivory Coast, it's a little bit difficult to have such places. You can visit places that can, uh, where you can learn about uh, the, the Ivory culture mm -hmm. story, but it's, it's not too accessible like mm. uh, in France. Can we, do you have to pay to go to these places? Yes, you, you have to pay, and it's like these last year that you have a lot more museum, not like in the 10 years, 10, mm. 10 years back then you have only one or two museums that you can visit. So yes, it's only now that uh, we have a lot more cultural places to allow visitors uh, to know about the culture. Otherwise, you have to, when you go to Ivory Coast, you have to have a guide mm -hmm. that can, um, that can uh, allow you to go to some specific places where you can meet elders that can talk to you about the uh, history mm. of uh, the, the country because we are a very oral um, mm. people. Mm. Oral tradition. So, mm. oral tradition, yes. So, it's now that uh, we starting to write things and to make specific places uh, in order to expose uh, these, uh, these mm. uh, cultural and historical um, story. And there, we'll pick up the story next week in the next episode the second part of this interview i hope you enjoyed that i think you'll agree there's lots of interesting things to learn about being an immigrant in france what it's like to come to europe as an african person um so don't forget to join us at speak meters there's lots of conversations happening every single day Nelly tells me her English has really improved a lot and partly that's been to, down to, to speak meters. It's a great way for you to practice in groups of like-minded people. Um, the advantage of this overdoing exchanges is that you don't have to speak in your own language if you don't want to, but you can. You can offer a session in your native language and that way you won't have to pay for the sessions you do in another language. But otherwise, you can use it as a, a really, really um, efficient way to practice the language you want to practice. And then that way, you do have to pay for, for sessions, obviously. Um, and it's a small community where people can get to know each other quite well and often meeting once or twice a week, depending on your language and the other people who are joining in. So it would be great to see you there. Um, use my link to join up. Also, I've put my email address in the description. If you have any comments, any ideas for episodes, queries about how to learn languages better, any questions, disagreements, anything you want, please get in touch. So I'll see you next week. Have a lovely week. Bye. Thanks for listening. What do you think about today's topic? Remember, you can get in touch by leaving a comment or by joining the Speak Meters community. Follow Speak Meters on Instagram and subscribe to Spoken Like a Native on your favorite podcast platform. You can also leave a comment and like the stream. Please, please, please leave a review. It really helps us to find new listeners who are looking for fun language learning content. And
And lastly, don't forget to head over to speakmeters.com to take part in live conversations hosted by friendly native speakers. That's all for today. Catch you next time. Bye.